Hi, I'm Emily Rose, welcome to my channel and welcome to this mini series on how to get drawing. I think when you want to start going and you think, oh, I'm gonna get straight into this, I feel so inspired, you can suddenly ground to a halt because there are a few questions that you haven't answered yet and you might get partway through a drawing and realize actually it's quite important to address those before you get going so you can properly enjoy it. So let's start by looking at materials. Now, of course, there are an entire world full of art materials out there to pick from. We have got acrylics, we have got oils, we have got pastels. There is just so much to choose. Where do you even start? So if you have decided to use pastel pencils, I can give you my most favorite brands to use and why I like to use them. So it might be a good place for you to begin looking. So let's start by looking at the Faber-Castell. Now the Faber-Castell pencil is probably my most used pencil. I have an entire set of these. Um, I can't quite remember how many are in a set. Might be about 60 odd pencils. Um, so you get quite a good range of different colors and different tones. But the reason I like using them the most is because the pencil itself is quite malleable. It's quite easy to use for my different techniques and the different stages of a painting. So when you're producing a pastel painting, when I'm producing a pastel painting, I always start with an underpainting. And an underpainting is sort of a, a messy stage. I always say to people, if it looks like a five-year-old did it, it probably done it right. So this horse, for example, did not start off looking finished as I moved from little section to little section. What I actually started off doing with the horse is I picked out the darkest areas first and I laid in just a general um, tone with a dark pencil. Um, I used a variety of dark browns and greys in there. And then I moved to the mid-tones and started to model up where the highlights were going to go getting a bit technical and ahead of ourselves here. But the point was I was using the pencil in a very non-technical way. It wasn't to add detail at that point. So I want the pencils to be able to cover the page quite easily um, and quite smoothly. Now the Faber-Castell out of all of the pencils that I'm gonna show you is the hardest um, of the lot, but I can still use it very effectively for an underpainting and I tend to use it on the side for that. And one of the reasons that I can use it on the side is another great feature of these pencils is that the wood is very easy to chip away. Whatever type of wood they've used to case the pastel in, um, it does whittle away quite easily. You'll note from my other tutorials, I don't use pencil sharpeners and we'll get onto that in another, another video entirely. Um, but some pastel pencils can actually be very tricky to sharpen and you can end up breaking the nib. And that's another point. The nib on the pastel pencils um, are a little bit thicker than some of the other brands, so it's just a little bit more durable. When it comes to the final layers and you're adding those details, you're adding that really fine fur, or as with the horse, you're adding in the beautiful flowing tail, you want to have a needle sharp pencil that is gonna show up. And again, the Faber-Castell, because it's quite hard, is very good at holding its point for longer than the other brands, and I can get really fine marks. It's especially great for drawing in whiskers with. So I have a full set of these, and I think if you're looking for a place to begin, I would invest personally in some of the pit pastels, whether that is a full set or not. And I have an ebook below that um, has lists of the different colors that you might want. If you don't want to invest in a full set, there's a mini set that I suggest because getting a smaller um, official set of pencils, like a half size tin, you often get just loads of bright pinks and blues and colors that aren't that useful if you're doing wildlife. So check the ebook out down below to help you with that. The next brand we're gonna look at is Cretacolor. Now, I might be pronouncing it wrong, so I do apologize if that's the case, but I have a fair few of these as well. Not as many as the Faber-Castell, but I do enjoy using these pencils. Now, it's worth noting that I find the, the Cretacolor a little bit harder to sharpen. The wood is a little bit denser around the pastel, and the pastel itself, I think, is a little bit narrower in diameter as well. So they do tend to break a little more easily, and you definitely want to make sure that you've reserved a sharp craft knife for sharpening these. I have um, many a time gone from tip to end in one go trying to get some pastel and it turns out the pastel's actually broken on the inside and it's very frustrating. However, they have a couple of pencils that fill in some gaps in the color wheel that Faber-Castell provide. So 
Faber-Castell, um, like all brands, they only provide a certain amount of pencils. And of course, there will be a couple of spaces where you think, oh, I wish they had this color. I wish they had just a slightly different blue. And that's when I turn to another brand because often you can find a variation that fits it a little bit better. So the pencil I use most from Creta Color is actually a gray called Yellow Gray. And it sits really well between a mid-tone gray from Faber-Castell and a light gray from Faber-Castell. And I find the tonal jump between those pencils quite large. And if I need something to sit between them, then this yellow gray is absolutely bang on. The Creta colors are a little bit softer to use than the Faber-Castell. So for those underpaintings, they're actually a little bit better. They're a little bit easier to use. They're also really good for glazing because they're soft. Whereas with the Faber-Castell, you can't glaze as easily with them. It's not quite as effective. But being harder to sharpen is a bit of a drawback, of course. It means that you can't get as much pastel out in one go. And when it comes to adding details, the pencil, because it's soft, will blunt quite quickly. So you can spend a lot of time sharpening them. That all said and done, I've got a couple of pencils from Creta Color that I just wouldn't be without. And again, they're in the ebook as well, if you want to check those out. So next, let's come on to one that you've probably all heard of, Derwent. I don't actually rate the Derwent too highly. For me, personally, I find them a little bit too soft. Um, the Creta Color, as I said, they're softer than the Faber-Castell, but they are harder than the Derwent. I find that the Derwent blunts very quickly, so getting those really sharp details is not as easy. But I also find that the amount of pigment in the Derwent pencil um, to be a little bit lower. I find when I'm using it, that the quality feels a bit lower in these pencils. That said, they do some fantastic colors. So when you want to fill in the gaps in that color wheel, um, Derwent will often have an option there. Their range is really spectacular. Um, being really soft, they're great for underpaintings and I'll actually use them for flowers. You know, those flowers have got very smooth surfaces to them quite often. So using a soft pencil isn't um, a drawback. In fact, it can be easier than using a Faber-Castell. But you've just got to go a little bit steady because they can fill up the tooth of the card faster than you actually want. Um, in terms of sharpening, they're fairly easy to sharpen. The wood is quite soft, but I do find that the pastel can break fairly easily. Um, being a softer pastel, it's quite brittle. So they're an okay option, but I wouldn't personally invest in a full set. I'd prefer the Faber-Castell as a full set. And lastly, we'll come to the Carbothello by Stabilo. Uh, I haven't used very many of these pencils. So these were bought in a bit of a panic when I couldn't get hold of the right pencils and I had to just randomly choose an alternative pastel pencil online, which is not ideal because of course you don't really know what color you're buying. And I bought, there's hardly any left, but I bought this gray. It's cold gray too. And it's really great. I actually use it so much. Hence, hence there's hardly any of it left and I really need to order some more, but it's very, very blue. Now, in terms of how the pastel behaves, these are similar to the Derwent's, but I find them a bit smoother. They're a bit more buttery. Um, and I find that for that reason, they work better as a smooth coat. They're good to add um, a glaze down with. They're very good to add a, an under painting with and you can get details as well um, but I prefer a slightly harder pencil for adding details because of course you spend a lot of time resharpening a soft pencil because it will just blunt very very quickly. They're fairly easy to sharpen. I wouldn't say they're quite as easy as the Faber-Castell, but they're not bad, not bad at all. And the colors, again, in this range are really great. I particularly love this blue and it is, it doesn't say. I think it's their light ultramarine, but I can check that. Um, it's a really great light blue. I find um, it quite difficult to get hold of a good blue in pastel pencils. I think it must be to do with the pigment in them, but they can be very brittle um, as, as a color. Whereas this Stabilo pencil is really great. And the color, as you can probably tell, it's so vibrant. It really pops out of a painting. So I have a full blog post on all of this. And of course there's the ebook that's linked down below. It's totally free. That way you've got a guide to keep with you. You can have a look for which, um, as I say, which colors of pencils I recommend as well as the brands. So when it comes to shopping, you've got a bit of a go-to just to ground you because there are so many options. It's worth noting, I haven't tried every pastel pencil on the planet. I've tried them within a reasonable price range. And when I found something that works, I often think don't fix what's not broken. So my number one 
pencil brand has to be the Faber Castell, followed by the Creta Color, and then followed by the Carbacello, and lastly for me would be the Derwent's. So if you want to find out more about how you can get going with drawing, subscribe to the channel and there will be a video posted every week to help you from choosing your materials to putting pencil to paper and making the right choices as you go along. And when you get to drawing, or if you want some inspiration, do you want to check you've got the right reference photo, you can just put your questions into the community. I'm on there once a week to give you feedback and give everyone answers, and you don't need to be a member of my subscription on Gumroad to access that at all. It's totally free and you can find us at Emily Rose Fine Art Drawing Class, which is a Facebook group. I hope to see you there soon. Until next time, happy drawing.